Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Anime Plus News. This is episode seven. I'm your host, Alex Light, with Sparky3, and we are back with video after doing, I think, like three or four episodes without video between Lighthearted Games, Anime Plus, and Anime Plus News. No video because of a computer problem. We are back back in action and expect the same thing out of the upcoming episodes of anime plus and lighthearted gamers those will both be back in video format of course uh we actually have some pretty cool stuff here for uh for today that i'm really excited to talk about uh our normal manga sales uh we have the first week sales for the weekly shonen magazine volumes we're on third week of the weekly shonen jump obviously top five in japan uh but we got a lot of good stuff to talk about so let's go ahead and jump into it the first thing that i want to talk about here today is something that i got really excited for because uh i feel like it was going to happen eventually i feel like we could all say that this was going to happen happen eventually is uh, Tokyo Avengers is going to be officially getting an English release but not only an English release it's going to be getting a printed release like this isn't just going to be digital that's big that's a big dub uh, Tokyo Avengers of course taking the world by storm this year it has gotten the same treatment that we saw at a Demon Slayer when the anime came out JJK when that anime came out Tokyo Avengers was the next in line and the sales went absolutely just bonkers um, so this is really cool to see that it's getting an English release because I mean by the time that the anime started uh, it was probably in the 180s for chapters and obviously no English release over here. I guarantee a lot of casual anime fans that, you know, kind of, you know, only kind of check out like what's super popular probably never even knew what the series was. I, you know, I, I check out a lot of series across the board. I don't consider myself a casual by any means, but even I didn't, you know, really know a lot about Tokyo Revengers. I saw it. I'm like, okay, I think I've heard of you, but what is it? So I think this is super cool to see that it's finally getting an English release over here with all the popularity that was the anime, the live action movie came out, which apparently was not terrible. I still really want to see that movie, uh, but it's going to be starting releasing in in May 2022 in a two-in-one uh, volume format by Seven Seas. So, hey, you know, two volumes for the price of one essentially is how it's going to be going. At least I'm assuming that's how the price is going to be going. But that's how it's going to be coming to you is a two-in-one uh, sort of format to kind of catch up with the amount of volumes that's out there. Either way, that's super cool to see Tokyo Avengers going to be coming out over here in the West. And uh, something I might look to pick up. I really enjoy this manga. If you have not read it yet, I definitely recommend giving it a read. Uh, next thing, Unordinary, a webtoon that we review here on the show between me and Zach. It is set to return December 8th. That is a super exciting thing. You know, with how the last season came to a close, a huge, huge character character arc of John finally kind of, you know, not wrapping up completely. There's still some things that we need to take care of, but really kind of coming to, you know, uh, a closing point where we are now entering this next season to see how he's going to continue to respond with everything that happened towards the end of this last season. So really excited for Unordinary to come back. If you have not checked out Unordinary, I definitely recommend it. Um, about, you know, it's yeah, like a superhero webtoon, basically, where but superheroes are kind of outlawed, where they're considered vigilantes. It's all focused on uh, kids in a private school who all have their, their different abilities and stuff. Uh, and then there's those people that, um, you know, there are the, the, the rare few that don't have abilities, and they're just known as cripples and weaks and whatever. Uh, definitely recommend giving an ordinary a read. It's a very fun read. Next up, uh, Demon Slayer, the Entertainment District Art, is set to begin uh, next week, uh, December 5th. It's kicking off uh, the recording of this episode here today. The final episode of the Mugen Train arc is being released. A, um, and I, w I did see that the Entertainment District Art is set to be scheduled for 11 episodes, I believe is what it's going to be. Uh, so that's going to be pretty exciting. I'm ready to kind of kick things off with that. I have been watching uh, the Mugen Train arc week to week. Uh, I mean, it's fun. Obviously, it's, it's a good watch, um, you know, especially if you don't really have the time to sit down and watch the movie at one go. But, I mean, it's still good content, obviously. Just, you know, wish, wish there could have been some, maybe a little bit more different stuff. There wasn't as much difference as, uh, yeah, as coming into it as we thought. It's pretty much a shot for shot. So, but either way, the Entertainment District arc, super excited for that to kick off here soon. Uh, Hiro Mashima, the creator of Fairy Tale, Eden Zero, Rave Master, etc. Uh, he is set to begin serialization of a new manga in Manga Poke, and it's going to be based on the video game Gate of Nightmares, which he designed the characters for. So this dude's going to be rocking with Eden Zero, Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest, which he does have help for, and now Gate of Nightmares. I'm curious who's going to be helping him get him uh, Gate of Nightmares. Obviously, he has assistance across the board. That help him when it comes to Hundred Year Quest. I believe it's like a Dragon Ball Super or Boruto situation where he just helps write the series and he has. There's a completely different artist. I believe that's how it goes for One Hundred Year Quest. But yo, mad props to Hero. I mean, Hero's working, man. He, he's he's grinding. He's he is an inspiration for what we all need to be doing, and that's just grinding at our work because he's definitely doing that. Uh, next up, uh, the new series uh, P Six. It's a musical manga and Weekly Shonen Jump. Want to give this a little shout out. Uh, me and uh, me and Zach checked this out, and we didn't really 
care for it. I mean, this is actually a new series that I flat out dropped. You know, over the past year or so, I you know, I've stuck it out with a majority of these new series. You know, there's not many that I've flat out dropped. I dropped Witch Watch for a brief time, picked that back up, and now I have um, once again kind of dropped Witch Watch after picking it back up. I mean, but like, you know, a lot of these newer series, I pretty much start and I kind of stick with it. You know, I don't I don't drop it or anything. Um, P6 is one that I dropped very quickly. I think five chapters in and I kind of let it go. But P6 Love, that's the question here. Uh, apparently, famous Japanese singer Otto and the manga artist Shiro uh, Uzazaki, who is the act age artist. Let's not mix this up. Artist. I saw some people mixing it up online where, you know, they were saying, oh, is that the person that was like diddling kids or whatever? No, that's the writer. Two different people. Don't mix that up, please. Uh, have both come out and said that they were, are really enjoying P6. What are your thoughts on P6? I'd love to hear from you. Comment down below on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Sparky3. Um, and I'm wondering if this will have the same effect as the tight Kubo effect, as I call it, for High School Family. High School Family, of course, a series that does not perform well in sales. The level of sales that High School Family has is acts worthy. I mean, we've seen it before. I mean, hell, the Volume 4 came out for High School Family, and just to give a comparison, um, Red Hood Volume 1, Nero Volume 1, both of which been Axe now, they both had the same amount of sales as High School Family. High School Family, I swear, was on Axe status until Tyke Kubo came out and said, yeah, High School Family is one, you know, one of my top five favorite series that I'm reading right now, Wiku Shun Jump, you know, and he named a couple other like, popular ones. So I'm wondering if, if this is going to have the same sort of effect for P6, where P6 is going to hang on longer than it may should. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I understand this, this series has its niche audience, yes, um, but the general, this is the first positive thing I've seen out of P6. I'll put it that way. Uh, next up, we do have the Jump Giga that is coming out here on uh, Christmas Eve, uh, December 24th, of course. The cover for it is going to be Blue Box. The lead cover page is going to be a series called Zenkai 2 uh, Togachigi. I probably butchered that. Anyway, moving on. Um, and then we're going to have some extra stuff involving Demon Slayer TV key, anime visual, and an, an original Bleach poster by Tite Kubo. And then it's going to be 17 different one-shots in this. Of course, the Giga is something that has a shit ton of one-shots. And maybe something is going to end up being uh, serialized next year in Weekly Shonen Jump. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, do have some Hunter Hunter news, and unfortunately, I wish it could be good news, but it's not. <laughs> well, I mean, that's not true. There's one piece of it that's bad news. There is some good news in this. Uh, the first thing is Hunter Hunter and Universal Studios Japan are collabing, and it's going to be a limited time attraction starting in March. Uh, and also, Hunter Hunter has also reached 70. 9 million copies in circulation. The sales in this series just continue to amaze even how long it's been since we had any sort of content. In fact, I actually have a number for you. Uh, we have now passed the three-year mark, three full years of no chapters for Hunter Hunter. Uh, this is unfortunate. Shout out to all the Hunter Hunter fans that are holding on to any hope that you got. Um, but this series is very well dead in my mind. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, T's and P's to the creator, um, legendary creator who did uh, not only this series, but Yu Hakusho. But, uh, you know, he, it's basically to a point now where he basically goes from, like, his bed to the hospital bed. I mean, like, he's in that much pain. Like, I know some people just, like, you know, they they li they hear the fact that he's in so much pain because of, like, the back pain and stuff. And he's just like, and they're just like, oh, I mean, surely it can't be that bad. No, it is that bad, guys. I mean, he, I mean, this guy is literally going from his bed to the hospital at times. You know, that's the only two places he's pretty much going with how bad his back is. So, I mean, this series to me is pretty much come to a close. You know, I, I honestly don't think this series will be finished until after he passes. You know, because I know that uh, the blue the blueprints has been laid out for the series for his, I believe, his wife to finish, who was the creator of Sailor Moon, of course. And, uh, you know, she has, I believe, come out and said that, you know, if he was to pass, you know, she will finish up the series. She will, you know, give it justice or whatever. That's just me, that's just me making assumptions based on what I've read in the past. So don't hard quote me on that. That. Um, but either way, this is a series that, as of now, in my mind, is completely dead. It's very unfortunate. I've never checked out the series for the simple reason I don't want to get super attached just to this series just for it to never finish. Uh, but I do completely acknowledge its unbelievable popularity. I acknowledge its greatness. I acknowledge how amazing of a series it is. So just unfortunate that we've gone this long without a chapter. But, you know, at the end of the day, health comes first, guys. That's that's the bottom line. Uh, next up, Kaiju number 8 has 5.5 million copies in circulation. Shout out to Kaiju number 8, man. It is on the rise. Cannot wait for 
for an anime for this to come out. You guys are going to absolutely love it if you don't read manga and, you, you know, you're just kind of setting back to see what the next big hit's going to be. Yo, this is going to be the next big hit in anime. Just watch. Uh, next up, the final Weekly Shonen Magazine, uh, Weekly Shonen Jump, sorry, Weekly Shonen Jump volume for the year has been released featuring uh, Doro Doron and the cover, which is from the creator of a older series that did not last very long called Golem Hearts. Uh, a lot of people are pretty excited for this series to kick things off. Uh, My Hero Academia will ha have the lead cover for Weekly Shonen Jump Volume 1, which kind of makes sense, you know, with some of the big stuff we've had go on in there recently. Uh, and then Black Clover will be on a break for Weekly Shonen Jump Issue 1 and return Weekly Shonen Jump Issue 2. And I, I, I wanted to mention that little plug here because I want to address some concerns I have with Black Clover. If you listen to the normal Anime Plus show, which, first off, you should, uh, Zach and I and even Josh, we've talked at length about how much in-game status Black Clover has felt for a good portion of this year. And I f still feel like that is the case. And I also feel like there's uh, maybe some potential health issues that's not coming out in the public. Because I remember a while back, uh, Yuki Tabata took a week off, I believe it was, just one week. And it was because it was unexpected break because of health issues. And then ever since then, Week after week after week, we have had nonstop 15-page chapters, which are short for that. Normally, they're about 20 to 23 pages for a chapter, you know, in the past. We've had 15-page chapters consistently for, God, four or five months now. Uh, and then this one coming on a break here soon. So I just wanted to shout that out, kind of put the thought in your brain that maybe Yuki Tabata is still dealing with some health issues right now, and he's just powering through it. You know, I know he just got a much larger team, much larger studio, so he may feel like the, you know, he may feel inclined to really push his content out. Hopefully that is not the case. Hopefully I'm just shooting shit out of my ass right now. Uh, but I don't know. It's just it's just a trend that I've seen with how fast paced it's been, with the with the short chapters nonstop for months. You know, coming you know that starting right after he took an unexpected break because of he was he was had some health issues so hopefully everything's good in Yuki Tabata's world and uh you know with this latest arc in my opinion it's been a big drop of the ball unfortunately I feel I mean there's been a couple cool moments but I feel like it's been too jumbled and too fast-paced that's my opinion uh Zach kind of shares the same opinion so does Josh but you know I know there's gonna be those Black Clover fans that's gonna completely disagree with that and hey it's totally fine you're inclined you know inclined to that opinion but uh Black Clover's in a really weird spot right now not as bad as Dr. Stone though Dr. Stone Oh, don't even get me started on Dr. Stone, but I guess we're going to talk about it anyway because we're going over to the Weekly Shonen Jump volumes. This is the third week, kicking things off with Dr. Stone Volume 23, 189K, Lucy Samurai Volume 3, 72K, Sakamoto Days Volume 4, 43K, Witch Watch Volume 3, 34K, and Red Hood 1, High School Family 4, and Nehru 1, all not ranked. For the first week of the Weekly Shonen Magazine volumes for this newest bunch, Couple Cuckoos Volume 9, 61K, Shangri La Frontier Volume 6, 47K, Four Nazi Apocalypse Volume 4, 45K, uh, Bakamano Guitari Volume 15, 40 5k as well matchmaking of the amagami household volume 3 30k eden zero volume 18 23k also very excited for the time skip that's coming in eden zero that's gonna be really pumped i'm, I'm pretty pumped to see what's gonna all come out of this uh my charms are wasted on Korra madaka volume 2 16k a saint join my party volume 2 6k and eye contact volume 1 3k not doing too good for that volume 1 volume 2 there and what is the top five in japan right now this is dated for november 21st kicking things off at number one kingdom volume 63 next funeral free Ran volume six, number three at high school family volume eight, number four. What did you eat yesterday? Volume nineteen and number five. Pushing child volume six. That is your top five selling volumes in Japan as of November twenty first. Uh, well, that's going to do it for this show. Uh, we kind of hit everything that I wanted to hit for today's episode. Hopefully, you took something away, whether if it was the sales or just any of the general news that I kind of threw out there and to uh, you know put in your brain. Uh, you comment down below your thoughts on anything that we did talk about here today. I'd love to hear from you, you know, whether it be the sales, maybe the Hunter Hunter thoughts, maybe Black Clover thoughts, Tokyo Avengers. Have you guys checked out? Do you want to, you know, do you, you want to buy the English print? You know, let me know. That's I would really love to hear from you guys. Uh, make sure to check out the normal show of Anime and Plus where we talk about all the latest anime and manga that we are reading and watching. Until next time, guys, have a good one. See you.